Often the poorest man in the smallest house will be happier than the richest man in the biggest house. <laughs> the cleverest scientists don't have a formula. <laughs> Maybe we never will. <laughs> I actually hear you laughing. I am Sophie, young, popular, talented. I am a friend, a daughter, a sister. And it might look like I've got it pretty easy, but this, all these crazy things, private jets, fast cars, beautiful friends, they've made me think, am I happy? What the fuck is up? Nice to meet you. My name's Enbird. If you're new, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. Today is a special day. This ARG web series has been a big part of my growth and I have loved the journey and the series has come to an end and I was invited to lead a Q&A and I hope you enjoy. So if you've sort of followed Sophie, someone who's also followed Sophie and made content about it throughout the pretty much the entire thing right almost from the first yeah, one yeah you know creating and, and doing commentary on it uh, yeah. so i sort of reached out to to him and said look i feel like you're like the perfect person to kind of host a a, a meetup where we can just kind of talk about stuff and just generally yeah, i feel catch, like you were on nathan i remember tom and i when we were scrutinizing the channel to see who picked this up the other days <laughs> i remember you picking up very early on and having some good theories man you were on to us you were on to us from day one yeah it's been fun and i've met I mean, I met Nightmind and Inside of Mind and Lowy and all those people, and and they've all been great. So I would have loved to see you in the pink suit, Tom. I won't lie. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> man. I did try it on. I'm not gonna lie. I I just couldn't get into it. So what was yeah, the uh, what was the original ending? Like, where did you plan to stop it before it got, I guess, a, a wider audience? The, the the actual ending, the true ending, is actually in is actually is actually there. The max stream stuff was supposed to kind of arc that and get to that mm. ending. But the true ending of, of Sophie is actually when the trigger is pulled. The uh, the homeless man's head gets splattered right. uh, across the pavement. So that's the actual true ending. So it, it is there. It's just, you know, as it got to the point where things stopped being linear and things started becoming all over the place, mm -hmm. that's actually where it was going to curve back and come back around. For oh, the okay. Man. And then Max the kind of connects all the dots that people were. Yeah. 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 I know I did a interview with BB originally so you're going to get to answer some of these questions again. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> um, I saw that video. I, I absolutely loved it. <laughs> when, you, when you proposed to her, I was like, "Oh my god, this is so real." I was yeah. like, yes. <laughs> It's yeah, so I mean, it got to make the people happy, right? So, where did that come around? Why, why are you guys married? How, um, how's that? It happening? was when was it? It was one of the first Lara vlogs when she was like, "Oh, I'm playing video games," and I, I looked in the camera. I was like, "Oh, she's a gamer. It's time to simp, everybody." And then after that, I just started joking like, oh, Lara's my wife. And then for my 1000 subscriber special, one of a member of my community edited like this video of a wedding with like Leon Lush officiating. It. <laughs> and um, yeah, just memed it, memed it to hell from there. Just one baby's heart from that. Uh, well, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Starting from the beginning, what was everyone's first impression of the project? I was on my way to a haircut in London. I got a call from Tom. Tom and I have been friends for years and years and years. We haven't spoken for about a year. Tom phoned me. He said, he texted me to preface this saying, I've got a project in mind. Can I give you a ring? He rang me and said, I've booked a private jet. We've got to do something. <laughs> And that was the start of it. That was the start of it. He's like, I've got this idea. I want to fake a YouTuber. I want to start this channel. I want to twist it and make it like a horror. But I've booked this jet. He had the dates and he was like, that's our time scale, the ticking time. So we have this phrase now, which is, if you haven't booked the jet, you're not serious about the thing you're doing. I saw it on a, um, like an acting job website. And I just sort of sent a random tape that I'd had. And it weirdly seemed to sort of fit, I think, what Tom was looking for. And then me and Tom met for a coffee and went over the details of the project and I just thought it was really cool like because I've never heard of something where you're like acting but trying to make people think you're real because mm -hmm. most of the time when you're acting people know they're watching something fake so I thought it was like a really amazing challenge to take on to sort of try and make people believe that like this is a real person. Did you read a lot of the comments and keep up with a lot of the community 
input as it was going? Like, did, did the comments affect a lot of what you were doing narratively or stylistically and things like that? I, yeah. I found the way that the comments developed really funny, really interesting, actually, like throughout the videos, especially the first three or four videos where people started to cut on like where it was kind of heading. I found the development in the comments so funny because <laughs> people were, were quite harsh at the beginning yeah. weren't they because of course yeah. it was a bait for hate but um when people started to realize the positivity that kind of came out of it and like the eager to see like the eager that people were feeling to see more mm-hmm. i loved it it was really interesting so they were rude to emily at the beginning and then the second they found out that she was an actress they were like oh my gosh she's so brilliant like we love her it was like <laughs> oh you're so fake <laughs> why, why did i do this with emily like poor girl but she was just so cool about it. I was really proud of you because they were so rude because they were jealous of you and they were picking on you, but it didn't let you harm you. And then as soon as they turn around and they were loving you and I was like, yes, girl. And I think it, it helped that there was definitely a lot of variety in the first video. Like you showed a lot of the extravagant lifestyle and it wasn't just there was uh, the first video definitely had the biggest budget. If Correct me if I'm wrong, but that it seemed like that was the most sophie billionaire that the series got when me and dan got together to sort of figure out and mimic billionaire's son we basically went through his video and we were like okay what can we use from his video that we can use in this and how can we cost effectively replicate it as well i booked greece for literally two days so we flew out on like an easy jet flight which was like 50 quid each i think and then I booked like a, a big, a biggish house in the middle of the island away from anything uh, for two nights, uh, which was a hefty, hefty sum. But I was like, if we're going to do it, let's do it. Those shots, those shots that we got out and that was, that was to all intents and purposes, a genuine night out. We were, um, it was incredibly unprofessional. We were all hammered. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> It was literally the best filming I've ever done. It was so much fun. It was mad though as well, because like obviously Etty um, worked incredibly hard to make everyone look amazing and everyone was glittered up and we were like, okay, what 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 happens if we just glitter? Everyone was glittered up. Like Dan was glittered up, I was glittered up, everyone was glittered up. And it's like, I wonder what happens if we just go to this grease strip and we just we just see if we can get in and that's essentially what that was right we just kind of showed up um everyone looking amazing and the next thing you know they kind of just treat you like you're you're a celebrity it was the it was the most bizarre experience it was the it was i think it was the only experience outside of the comments and the online stuff that actually saw how easy it was to pretend that you're you're famous. The best shot was Emily like dancing in slow motion in the club and these ratty boys just slow motion. <laughs> I mean, other than that, what was everyone's what was everyone's favorite shooting moment? Filming in that massive hall was really fun. That was really sort of charging around that in my pants was good fun. <laughs> All covered in blood. <laughs> Do you know what the best yeah. thing about that was? There was a load of that was a bit of a, a snafu <laughs> with that booking. And whilst we had booked it, there was also a troop of Burmese monks. <laughs> There at the same time, and so Joe was bombing it down in his pants covered in blood, whilst like a very sedate, peaceful Burmese monk was coming the opposite way. And there was this brilliant bit in that garden bit where Joe was sprinting past, like giving it everything. And this sort of this Burmese monk just kind of a, a smile as if he'd seen it all before, with like a little yeah. nod, as in, like, Yeah, 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 what is this? I'm so yeah. text of I am Sophie. Essentially, what was supposed to happen was that all of those shots with uh, Joe with. Uh, Mark running around being possessed and whatnot and the algorithm monster there but um so we, we popped him in he's the nicest like middle class guy and he, he just had a he had a great old man physique and I was like great we'll stick him in this <laughs> like, he, he, he loves sort of goofing around with the mask <laughs> yeah he did he had some good bits what was I, I sorry I, I just go back to Nathan's question I, I I would really be interested to know what was everyone's favorite moments I don't know if BB mentioned this in her last Q and A, but it was the morning that BB just broke, <laughs> and sprayed her whole body in deodorant. Not deodorant. <laughs> Head spray. Head spray. spray thinking and it was sunscreen. <laughs> Talking to BB, she's looking you in the eye like a like a human would, covering herself in hairspray, top to toe. <laughs> and it's like, what do you what do you do with that hairspray? And she thought it was um uh, like. Um, Sometimes like, like, air spraying yeah. herself. It just honestly it was just looking mad as hell. <laughs> Absolutely smashed. I really just poured my coffee on my white dress. <laughs> Isn't it? You'd lost the plot, man. You'd lost the plot. <laughs> oh, 
and the boat as well. That was another amazing moment. Just oh, jump. yeah, I was going to say the boat. That was a big boat ride. The, the thing the thing I don't think you guys realized about the boat was I think there was a point when we were trying to get back from so we rented we actually rented a tiny tiny shitty little boat and then pretended like it was a yacht and we kind of got the shots nice enough to look like they were jumping off a big yacht and we saw a big yacht out there and I was like dang get that so then as we were coming back but I don't think any of you realized the actual engine failed like literally 15 minutes away from getting back I was like let's just coast back I think my most favorite part was the horror scene when it was like everyone acted so well like Joe was you know, covered in blood and he was just playing it so cool and then Bibi was like you know being there as like a you know this dominating woman and ready to yeah. um, you know and then Emily was like you know just about to you know getting killed and, pe- and they acted so well mm-hmm. and it was absolutely freezing and I loved yeah. how they you know they just acted so well that was, was a it was a really great sequence the whole going from the mansion to the attic and and how everything kind of changed that was probably one of my favorite scenes as well was was that I guess is that, that is that was... the tilted room? Is that what is that the actual tilted room? The tilted room. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> we were like Amber, do you mind? Can we just get you in a bin bag? Do some stuff. <laughs> I didn't bat an eyelid. You were like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Whatsoever. I was like, I'll do, yeah, I'll do yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just, I've done, I've done bin bag acting. No I really enjoyed the scene um, walking around Lara's house, just completely slating and trashing everything I saw. Yeah. <laughs> like, My friend's house. That was. I felt awful. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I felt awful after that one too, so we don't have to get into that. <laughs> and what was everyone's favorite like character and line from the show besides Yes Queen? I like Twisted. I liked it when Emily was calling best, stuff Twisted. Best line of the show, yes. yeah. That's yeah. So actually Twisted. My vocabulary started to become like infected with Sophie words for about three months after, and I just couldn't stop playing super dope. I loved Emily's scene and just like the jet, and you just like improv the whole thing. <laughs> Was... Honestly, that's something to say. Actually, is em- like a lot of the like. Obviously, it was scripted, but uh, I think we'll probably cover this later. But like, ninety five percent funny lines in this are Emily's. Emily's improv is some of the best mm. improvisation I've ever seen. It was she just took to that character, and some of the stuff that came out your mouth, Emily, just like <laughs> do, so, if you ever see camera shake in it, it's because I'm pissing myself at what she's saying. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really glad that you guys gave. I mean, because when you have the struct like such a good structure of a script, and you like know what beats to hit. And like you guys giving me the freedom to just go crazy and like well, so because we said get from point A to point B and roughly cover these things, but because we started scripting it, we started with a very tight script and it just mm-hmm. you could see it a mile away. So then as soon as we started doing imp- like guided improv, it was just magic. The stuff that you were saying <laughs> was absolutely class. So seeing how like everything has wrapped up, what message does everyone take from I Am Sophie? Because I know it started as a commentary on influencer culture and how that can kind of corrupt someone. But I was just wondering what you guys got from the series. Empty bank account would be like <laughs> number one. <laughs> I think a big part of it is like don't take things too seriously. Like the internet is um, should be a place of kindness and love and education and fun. Mm-hmm. And there is so much hate there. So I think a lot of it was quite a, quite a big part of it to start with is as simple as just baiting people who hate and making them look a little bit silly as in like don't you know, life's tough. Don't waste your energies hating because it's it, it takes a lot out of you. Be nice, be kind. I, there was a lot of questions about the plot, but I've narrowed it down to to the most reoccurring ones. Um, <laughs> oh and, no, here we go. I mean, obviously, if there's something that um, that you don't want to answer, that's completely fine. So the missing Lara vlog, there was one that we never saw. I think it was number 11. I was wondering if there was anything in that that we would have gotten more into her character or her situation and stuff like that. So just to be honest, you know, the, the the actual ending of that vlog was something that I really wanted to film with Emily and BB together because it was the transcendence of mm-hmm. them into one, um, yeah. which ultimately you see at the end of, of the, the Horror House show. Um, so it was supposed to be a sort of moment of coming together and becoming one, if you will. So it was this idea that ultimately you know if that's kind of who you want to be everyone becomes the same thing and nothing Mm -hmm. is interesting and that was kind of the ending of vlog 11 essentially was going to be them coming together and and um you know you see that in the profile picture in the poster of Mm -hmm. i'm sophie it's them sort of combined and becoming one so that was the ending um that ultimately uh i couldn't get to film which was really sad and that's kind of why i went and everything and stuff like that that's why i went on hiatus because i couldn't get it done and yes i kind of tried to bring it back with with max stream and tie a few things together 
ultimately I just realized that, you know, that the magic of it was, was gone. And I went into building elaborate CGI scenes that I spent a lot of time on this computer here building. And so I built the mansion and I was building scenes to try and replicate what we had done, but in a virtual world. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it and I just thought, uh, I don't think yeah. anyone will like this. Also in, I believe it's the last episode, uh, we see Simon sitting there giving Chloe, the, the manager, his specifications for, I guess, this... Uh, well, Cradius Industries, the whole... I, I, I'm going to ask this question now. AI, female companion? <laughs> yeah, to, I mean, they weren't, they're not supposed to be like sex bots. Or yeah, okay. I, saw that one, I saw that flying around everywhere. It was just supposed to be companionship yeah. models. You know, a lot of different characters were supposed to tie together. Mm. Mark, you know, obviously works there along with Simon, and that was their relationship. David, who was played by Nathan Barnett. By the yeah. way, Nathan Barnett is like the coolest and probably yeah. one I of was... the most like famous people I've ever spoken to. I was to, actually talking to him last night. We were playing video games together, as we do. <laughs> um, and he was saying that he, uh, his character was Lara's dad. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so he said that there was a lot more to his scenes and stuff like that. And he was yeah. kind of talking me through it. But um, I thought that was also really interesting how Lara's dad was an employee of Kratius Industries and, and, and that stuff. And so, so the Sophie that we saw from the beginning, was that Simon's creation or was that real sophie like when did it switch from real life to simon's companion yeah so it was the sophie character was based on a real girl that died in a plane crash and uh, simon had taken information from that plane crash and that broadcast of this girl this uh, millionaire's daughter billionaire's daughter who died died in a plane crash and then he obviously he popped it into um, his algorithm and then the algorithm did its magic and turned uh, turned the whole thing upside down and sort of infested minds and leaked onto the internet and kind of became the series that you saw mm. from the start. So it's, it's super intertwined. There's lots of different links, but yeah. that's essentially the origin of Sophie, that she was a person. Uh, the, the Sophie we saw in the series was, was, was a, uh, was not real. It, it gets messy. It gets really <laughs> messy. We had some meetings. We had some meetings where uh, Tom would explain what was going on. And uh, it was, <laughs> yeah, I remember being like, you know, there's that meme of all the masks floating around yeah, the guy's yeah. face. It's, it's just like that. But the man in the mask uh, being the YouTube algorithm and kind of like the way algorithms work, um, potentially being something as well, which are essentially quite unhealthy um, and something that promotes, it's not about achieving success. It is about constantly having spikes on a chart, constant never ending success and never ending viewership and those kind of things, which, you know, um, isn't potentially isn't conducive to a, um, you know, having a good life as a human being and yeah. a bit of dissonance there, I think between the way that you can, if you're going to be successful online, um, you need to manage the human element well, otherwise it can, you know, completely take over. Yeah. And so I was going to ask you, Nathan, quickly, because uh, we were saying at the beginning of this call, uh, you obviously um, kind of almost grew with us as a channel. And Tom and I, we obviously mm. in the early days and, and still were watching kind of you. Have, how have you found sort of following this and comment? Have you, did you, have you, has it been an enjoyable experience for you? Have you enjoyed kind of like following and commentating and all that kind of stuff on, oh, on the show? Oh, yeah. I, I only talk about things that I'm interested in. I, I have people coming to me with, with ARGs and their web series and I'll watch a few episodes and I'm like, yeah, it's not really great. So I don't, I don't do content on it. So I think I was, I was up until the Max Dream stuff. I was like really into I Am Sophie. And then when Max Dream came out, I told my audience, I was like, I'm going to give it a watch. If I like it, I'll keep going on it. If I don't, I'm not going to I like, I'll, I'll be transparent, but I did like where it was going and, and how it was kind of connecting those dots. And I thought it was cool to, to reintegrate it back into the original story. Um, but I Am Sophie is definitely something that I've enjoyed talking about since the beginning of it we got to a point with the series there was obviously a, a while where the veil of secrecy was on the show mm. and our identities were a secret and there was a bit of a crux where we started getting phone calls and people were reaching in the in the meat space in the real world reaching out to us and it's that i remember tom you having a few difficult phone tom was amazing for this whole process you know like keeping us safe and safeguarding all that kind of stuff tom had to have a few difficult phone calls with fans where it's 
they're approaching this in terms of they you know sleuths and they're on a mystery and they're on the hunt and it's a genuine mm-hmm. feeling of getting to the end the plan was to make it seem as real as it could be and obviously hopefully kind of fool a few people into thinking it was real but gen- generally when you actually look at what we produced it, 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 i i felt like it, it was it was really funny i most of the time when i'm editing or most of the time we were filming we were laughing at almost everything that emily was 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 saying on the first edit that i cut together and i sent it to him that i said what do you think of this he's like dude this is probably way too funny so we had to cut i actually went in and had to cut all the joke pretty much all the jokes to make it seem more real obviously the brain worn monologue was also one of my favorite scenes uh, i loved it just you looming <laughs> in the bathroom um i was just wondering it, was that all scripted or was it improv or how did you feel about doing that scene in general yeah i, I watched it again it's it's i think it's word for word from the script mm. to be honest with you i like including <laughs> the the sort of um umming and ahhing um to, to the to the syllable it's it's verbatim um i was too scared to waver from it with Dan. Dan no it, it, was, it was i don't think i improvised that at all i was quite worried that when he speaks as ben i think we sound exactly the same and uh and sort of people with sort of sharp hearing would have thought hang on a minute well it was a, it was a 10 out of 10 performance honestly just oh thank you exactly yeah, yeah it was it was great it's just it's so exciting to do that and then see what's sort of done in in the post stuff that just really amplifies it and mm. just makes it so much better than you sort of you, you sort of yeah. remember yourself standing in your pants in a bathroom and and it kind of feeling good the um really funny thing about that whole thing was because we lit candles in that bathroom we had to have like a health and safety representative in there who was hiding in the bathroom. And we did like three long takes of this massive monologue. And after he it was all done, project, we forgot, A, forgot that he was in there. And then B, he came out, he went straight up to Joe. He was just like, that was the most brilliant thing I've ever seen before. <laughs> I was like, really? So Dan, I know that you and Tom worked very closely on, on the creation of I Am Sophie. And I was wondering if there was anything in particular that you guys had trouble translating to film or if there was things that you couldn't do because it seemed too abstract immediately as soon as um we got emily to read the script verbatim you could smell it a mile off so we changed quite quickly to that guided improv which as we said emily absolutely knocked out the park like honestly we were pissing ourselves throughout the whole thing and there's so much footage so that was the first challenge i think the other challenge as well was tom and i have uh, uh backgrounds in you know uh filmmaking and, and, and trying to make everything look as cinematic and and you know, the language of shots and all that kind of stuff. And that's not what this project was. So I think a lot of the initial shooting was very like rule of, you know, rule of thirds, cinematic and trying to make it really good. And it was like, you know, it needs to look shaky and in the moment. And it needs to look like your mates filming it on an iPhone, you know, on a iPhone or camera. I mean, I had a bit of wiggle room because obviously, um, the uh, uh the the template one, um, the uh, Bobby, was it Bobby Mills now? Bobby Meyer, um, yeah. Meisner, who reached out to us by the way, we spoke to Yeah, I, I, yeah, um, yeah. I saw that. <laughs> it's amazing. I've been having a, I've been, I've been. Te- it's weird, right? Because the Instagram account is just crazy shit show horror. He still messages that account, so like, hey Sophie, what's up? And I always message him back, be like, hey, hey Bobby. Emily, obviously, with uh, Sophie being rich billionaire's daughter, getting lots of hate. But did you read the comments, and did it affect you, either you personally or how you played your character? Yeah, I didn't read them for a while, and then I sort of the intrigue built, and I was like, well, how bad can it be? And to be fair, like the ones about like her personality and like her lifestyle weren't that offensive because it's not mine but when people start attacking like your looks or like my mole or like my tooth gap or my weight like you can't not really be affected by that but Mm -hmm. I've always felt quite like secure within my looks so I think it would have been a lot worse if I wasn't you just gotta think who are those people saying that and like they're probably not secure in themselves to start keyboard bashing away so it it was really interesting to read the reddit and stuff and like see things that i hadn't even really noticed how deep people can go in like something something really small that i said or did or that was in the script that then can hold so much meaning and it's like oh we filmed it and then it had like another life to it once it was out which was so interesting to like reinterpret yeah 
watching them. Yeah, I, lo- I loved the community. The nice people, not not the. <laughs> you did you did a great job, and it was very authentic and and a great performance. BB, I know I asked you this question before, but filming all by yourself for the majority of the Lara episodes, what was what was challenging? What was maybe better than filming with other people, and and what was the experience like? Knowing I wasn't gonna waste anyone's time because I because I could just like reshoot it over and over as many times as I wanted. I could judge my own performance it was almost like doing like a self-tape and just making sure it was like absolutely perfect like the way that I wanted it I I think the the let's play game one because that was quite uh an emotional ride so I was I was really kind of making sure that I I think I did that like three or four times just to just to make sure I was really happy with it um so that was good I quite enjoyed having that you know not having to worry you know is anyone else on a time pressure or whatever not being around other actors it makes it harder to kind of really get into it because the other actors kind of create the world as well i was also just getting really freaked out in this room like because i knew that tom was going to edit something creepy in the background and i just started getting really freaked out by what <laughs> i think again for someone filming on their own you definitely you, you portrayed a lot of the emotions that were integral to the I am Sophie story and and really gave Lara a, a good personality and and made it believable that she was being haunted even though she was alone with with no one else there. Just the cat running through the doorway. <laughs> it it was really cool seeing the contrast of Plum between when she got left at Lara's house and then when we saw her again. I know we didn't get a lot of insight into what happened during that timeline, but if if you were thinking in terms of your character like what was the degradation of Plum's mental state and what brought her to the ultimate demise. Plum was very dependent, especially in this world, on Sophie. It was, you know, everywhere Sophie went, Plum went. She was her her shadow almost. So when she was isolated entirely, it left her in a state to really analyse her relationship with Sophie and whether that was as legit as she thought it was or whether their lifestyle had a lot to do with that so I think it just made her really overanalyze the world that she was Mm. in and it kind of forced her to kind of look at the world in an entirely different way of course when she saw Sophie again she blamed Sophie entirely Mm -hmm. for everything that she'd come to learn but I think that's what really tipped her over the edge it's just actually being on her own without the support of anybody online or her best friend, who I think she lost trust in as well. I, I know that we see Lara as the crazy fan, but I almost also saw Plum as a version of a Sophie fan. I don't know, when we think we have friendships with influencers and stuff like that, and then they go dark, or they do something mm-hmm. that we necessarily don't agree with and then take it really, really personally, I almost saw that as like a, a commentary on that sort of relationship with an influencer as well. Yeah, for sure. Like, she was completely trapped in that world wasn't she and everything that she kind of did Mm -hmm. was influenced by her bff influencer so she was kind of following that world directly but not being the one who it was effectively directly affecting (laughs) and i thought it was it was a great range both the the happy plum and the your bitch plum (laughs) Um, but very well done absolutely loved the makeup in the series especially the the rhinestones and the light up club scene w- was there a favorite look that you had and and what was the hardest kind of style to achieve during all of the filming the girls absolutely loved every look so they were embracing it in any circumstances doesn't matter how dark small cold was the room they were just you know did anything i wanted and you know it was a very fast-paced job it was mm-hmm. the best i ever done it i loved the guys because we were like a big family they just looked amazing and I loved, you know, I did the makeup and they jumped in the pool and I was like, where are they? In the pool. Oh my God. <laughs> and the makeup. I was like, yes. When I covered them with blood, I mean, Amber was in a beanbag and I put blood all over her and made her pay. She looked like, you know, like really scary. And she was just, you know, so cool about it. She never complained once, you know, and then I was making my little vomit, you know, for Emily, putting in her mouth. Open your mouth, darling, now. And then... <laughs> And Bibi was just kissing her with my lovely homemade voice. It's ruined chunky vegetable soup for me. I saw some of that, so I watched the B-roll that Tom sent, and I saw the mixing and like the. 
<laughs> it was great. <laughs> I thought it was great. I, I loved all the costumes and the makeup and stuff like that. It was fantastic. And Tom, did you get everything out of I Am Sophie that you wanted to? And did you finish the story that you wanted to tell? Was there anything left unsaid that you wish you could have done? I'm disappointed in myself that I didn't get it where I wanted it to be in the end. And I'm also disappointed in myself that I, let, I felt like I let people down um, when, when, I, when it came to the end of it um as well uh and just kind of just giving giving up on it ultimately it's a story of the isolation in which being a full-time youtuber gets you to that lonely place massively personal project because it is basically a series that has culminated in my life as like a youtuber not a famous youtuber not a big influencer but a, a large brand where i talk about masculinity and i talk about fighting that kind of hatred for me as well and i'm nobody you know and and they would comment on you kind of got me to that position where i wanted to create a story based entirely on hate and what the algorithm does to your life most of the stuff that you actually see in this project are fabricated from the very nightmares that i was having the tilted room is something that i still dream about almost every night so i think generally personally the reason why i decided to, to call it quits because i kind of felt like it's always going to be a problem as long as you work in youtube this is always how i'm going to feel I think, I, again, this just goes straight back into the what I was talking about, wanting more. After the success of it, I wanted to do more and more and more and produce more stories and, and get really entangled in it. And ultimately, I just realized that I was doing exactly the same thing I was doing with my work. I was just making an absolute web and getting lost in it and actually forgetting about life outside of the internet. And I realized very recently, it's just that I need to, to just say goodbye to it. And sadly, that had to be abrupt. But mm -hmm. it also, I also felt like it was a good way of saying goodbye. I think it's a, a big thing to note that it's an ongoing struggle. Like it's not, I mean, the story being a commentary on YouTube as a whole, it doesn't end, right? So yeah. it, it either goes on forever or you stop it when you want to stop it. And I think doing it on your terms rather than continuing to push out something that you feel like you either have to do when you don't want to or something that the entire uh, not saying that you're not proud of the series but but putting out content for the sake of an audience and not for yourself mm. isn't something that you should be doing um which i think a big uh, a lot of people need to understand that when when a creator's done telling a story that's it i mean as as much as there's a community built around it if your heart's not in it and your passion's not in it anymore i, I think it's a, a good place to end thanks man <laughs> <laughs> made me feel a little bit better <laughs> Max streams is a is another is another thing in entirely, but I I do think the 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 last video that went up on the main channel of I'm so that's why the Max stream channel was created, it's because I felt like that was a nice ending in general, and these were going to be tidbits to fill fill the story mm -hmm. and try and do something that I was passionate about that just ultimately. It just wasn't there. And looking at everything as a whole, uh, the the Discord, the subreddit, all the all the community involvement. Was there anything that people missed that you wished they picked up on? No, no, I don't <laughs> think so. I think it was. I think everyone got everything. But yeah, honestly, the community and the the Discord and the conversation around it was amazing, and it ins actually inspired the story. Everything that was going on, all the videos that you were making, all the videos that Loey was making, all the videos that Nightmine was making, all of those videos actually contributed to the story in the end so whether you know it or not you were making the story along with me as well so that was really cool it's something pretty surreal to see a mad idea in your brain that you're not quite under you, you don't quite understand how to put that to paper and then being at the end of it and looking back at not just what we did together and what you guys created in it but the, you know, like the friendships and the communities and stuff that came from it is is so cool. It's so inspiring. So I think if if anything, it was just a massive thank you to everyone that helped me tell a really fucking weird story. <laughs> Are you guys working on any future projects? How can people find you and support you and, and continue following along with uh, your respective journeys in the industry? Well, Tom and I, well, we, we, that, yes, we would love to do something in the future. We'll say this, perhaps it's best, uh, We obviously, if we do do something, you won't know till it's happening, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I've been doing a, a bit of filming for, for a horror film recently. 
Um, I'm not sure when that's coming out. Maybe next year. Oh. So I'm, I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to say about it. Um, but you, you'll see me marking it up. And I'm, I'm doing a play uh, soon. So hopefully theatres remain open um, and, and I'll get to do that. Awesome. I did a horror film and uh, there were a lot of uh, adverts in the lockdown and commercials. And then uh, theatres are picking up now. And I uh, have my own shop now and jewellery. Awesome. Nice. Yes, I make jewellery now and, and crystal jewellery and I heal crystal with the crystal myself and others as well. I'm at drama school now, so I'm not well I'm working on like projects within within there, but it's only next year that they're gonna be public. But a few of my friends we've set up like a film company called Lonely Giant Film Company, if you wanna give us a follow. Yeah, and so we're just making bits and bobs. I've just started directing a documentary and like trying my hand at other things within the creative field of films. Yeah, I've been, I've got some shorts going around the circuit at the minute and the festivals and stuff that seem to be doing really well. So that's really exciting. And yeah, just bits and bobs really. Nothing, it's obviously been locked down, hasn't it? So everything's been really slow or at least slowed down a lot. But it's been really interesting during projects that have been more virtual based because I've done quite a few projects where you're having to film yourself. So yeah, it's been interesting to see how the industry has kind of had to adapt. So I guess over lockdown kind of just um, got drunk one night and I thought I'd try my hand at writing. Performed it as like a little 10 minute scratch night thing with my cousin. <laughs> and then yeah, it kind of did, did well-ish. People laughed, which is a good sign. Yeah, we were like, let's turn this into a one hour play. And then that kind of brief period yeah. where lockdown was kind of eased in autumn. I did like this, it was like a detective role where I was, you know, busting drug lords and stuff, which is fun. So that's going to be on Amazon Prime. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, yeah, you can you can follow me on MMA on Point. You can also buy Venom gear using the code <laughs> MMA on Point. You can also buy... <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, can I, um, I might put my bank account details up, and if anyone wants to send me the cash, <laughs> just send me some money. That'd be really nice. Uh, well, <laughs> for those people watching who would like to support the cast and crew of I'm Sophie, all the links and businesses and everything mentioned will be in the description. Please go support everyone. They have been amazing through this whole series and they deserve it. So thank you in advance. Well, thank you all for uh, giving out a part of your evening to be here. I greatly appreciate it. And um, I appreciate you all. It was a great story and uh, I very much enjoyed keeping up with it for the past year. Thanks, Dee. Thank you. Thank really you. Appreciate nice it. to meet you. Very you nice guys as well. Thank you once again to the cast and crew of I Am Sophie for today and also an unbelievable performance within the story. Once again, all of their links will be down in the description below. Please go support them. They do deserve it. If you like this video, leave a like. If you dislike this video, leave a dislike. Leave a comment. I read them. Subscribe if you want. Don't hit the bell because notifications are annoying. And as always, I'll catch you next time. Are you thirsty? I'm thirsty. Do you need energy? I need energy. Do you love tasty drinks? I love good drinks. G Fuel is a natural energy drink made by Gamma Labs. G Fuel gives you that boost of energy that you need without the crash. And there's 40 servings per tub. But Ember, what's in it for me? G Fuel gives you energy, focus, and endurance all while keeping you hydrated but wait i have a special offer for you use code enbird at the checkout and save 10 percent off your order so what are you waiting for go uh go um uh, get some g fuel today